What's going on guys? Etika from the Etika World Network and I apologize for my absence. I've been playing Watch Dogs and even though it's kind of gotten somewhat mixed reviews, I've really enjoyed it thoroughly, you know? It's my kind of game and hey, I, I, I really have to give a big apology because I've been gone for like almost four days now. I think it has been four days coming today, so yeah. I. But you know what? If you're into Assassin's Creed and you like open world games, then definitely try it out, you know? I mean. It, like a lot of people like to compare it to Grand Theft Auto and it's not trying to be like Grand Theft Auto but it's still fun in its own way and the stealth mechanic is one of the best so yeah if you're into stealth and open world then you kind of like shooters a little bit too and, it, and the hacking mechanism though man it, it's really well integrated but anyways I'm, I'm going off on Watch Dogs I'm here to bring you guys some more Pokemon Showdown right now here in New York City man summer has started well not, not officially but I mean the weather is clearly here it's about 80 degrees right now and it's almost 3 p.m. Oh, 2 18 p.m. It's it's really really hot, but um, I'm trying to keep cool here, man. I got my little fan here. You guys might be able to see that, and uh, I'm pretty much in a good I'm good I'm in a good mood right now. So I'm I'm ready to bring you guys some more battles. Now the thing is is that my team before I kind of wanted to switch up a couple of members, so I'm trying to go for like sort of an MVP kind of feel with this new team. But I'll show you them in action and then I'll, I'll break it down as we go along because I don't want to spend like five minutes just explaining what these guys do. So let's look for a game right now. Now, some of you may be saying, holy crap, Etika using Tyranitar, you know? <laughs> wow, you know, what, what, is, what is this? Yeah, you know, I he kind of fit in really well with the team, you know? I, I needed somebody to give me a solid counter to Talonflame or at least somebody that can take hits from Talonflame and Tyranitar does that exceptionally well and considering that he gets the boost from the sandstorm in the, in the sand with his rock typing he's a really good specially defensive wall too and I have two specially defensive walls in the form of Gyarados and Tyranitar so and then I also have um, a Haxorus, aka Onoksu. I, I, I love the Japanese names for the 5th gen Pokemon, man, because that's the, those are the first names that we learned for them. So, you know, Onoksu, Desukan. <laughs> Desukan. Oh, man, throwback, man. I remember when Black and White was first announced and we all had those Japanese names, so that's what we called everybody for a while. What was Ferrothorn's Japanese name? It was, um... Uh, what was Ferrothorn's Japanese name? We all used to call him by that all the time. And um, Landorus was Renkorosu or some shit. <laughs> anyway, so right now, all right, so we're dealing with many potential leads. I, I see Charizard as leads a lot of the time. Um, now, another thing I like about Tyranitar is the fact that he's a pretty good Charizard Y counter. You know, even though Charizard Y does get Solar Beam, if you switch him in while he's charging it up, then, you know, the sand will obviously negate the one turn solar beam and it'll be reduced to two so I like Tyranitar for that as well. He's probably going to try to set up his stealthy so considering that I'm, I'm thinking about just going into Darmanitan although the choice I mean although the focus sash is obvious and Darmanitan could be useful later on although I don't know I mean mm, you know let's go in there with Blastoise and go Mega so that way even if he does hit us with an earthquake we can take it really well and we can rapid spin his rocks away if he does manage to get those up. Let's go for the Aura Sphere. Wait, we should have gone for the Skull. That was a bad move. Whoops. But, anyways, Mammoth Swan is down. I don't know. The Skull would have probably done more damage than the Aura Sphere. Wait, no, no. Then again, Aura Sphere is powered up by um, Mega Launcher, so that would have done more damage. I just have Scald on this guy instead of Water Spout like before because I kind of want to see if I can get the burn on certain things. And, you know, Scald usually has a somewhat high chance of burning people. You know, 30% is nothing to laugh at, so I wanted to see if I could pull that off really well. And uh, so far, I like Scald on him, you know. The, the power, you can, there are some instances where I miss the power of having a stronger move or maybe like Water Pulse or something, but then again, it's only really ba 10 base power more, so it's not that big of a loss, to be honest. Now, the thing is, if I switch Tyranitar in there now, he's not going to be able to negate the, the sun from Charizard, or will he? Well, I mean, it's worth a try at least. You know, because if I switch him in now, the sand's gonna go up and then he's gonna go Y, and then the sun's gonna go up, so my sand's gonna be negated. That's the main reason why I never really decided to go into my um, Tyranitar as the first switch in to. Oh, okay, that's a Charizard. Oh, snap, damn! Okay, but then again, no, he, he was going for the Thunder Punch anticipating Mega Blastoise to stay in. So, you know, not, not too surprising there, but... Alright, so we got Charizard X in the building rather than a Y, and I didn't expect... I didn't expect Charizard X to have Thunder Punch. I didn't even know he got those moves. The coverage on this guy. Uh, hmm. Alright. 
anyway, so I know they also have Brick Brick, so I don't want to switch in there with Tyranitar because I know I'm going to get my shit destroyed. But I think, I think Blastoise can take, I think Blastoise can take um, a Thunderbolt, a Thunder Punch from Mega Charizard X. You know, we're going to go back in there with Blastoise. I really want to get these rocks away, but right now this Charizard is going to give us a little bit of an issue. Let me see what this thing's detailed on. Yeah, 100 base speed. It outspeeds everything on the goddamn team. And the point was going to be to go for a Thunder Wave to slow him down, but with the Thunder Punch, that, that, that caught me right here. So, I'm guessing the best option would be to go for like a Dark Pulse or an Aura Sphere. Because, I mean, I think the base power of those would be higher considering Mega Launch. But then again, it's probably the same because Scald is 80. These other two moves are 80, so it's, it's all the same. It doesn't really matter too much. So we're gonna go for the Scald. And it's a good thing we did too, at least we caught Clefable in a good position. So now, we can go for a Rapid Spin and get those rocks away so Darmanitan can come in a little bit safe. Although this Clefable now has got me in a bad position as well, because we don't have Roar from Gyarados. Oh boy, okay. This is not good. We gotta go in there with our Manitan and hit this thing with everything we've got. That's the only option that we have at this point. I know it has Moonlight, which is quite an issue, but hopefully this Flare Blitz will do a lot of damage. Considering it's Sheer Force and Life Orb and, you know, 120 base power is Flare Blitz, yeah, we should do a lot of damage to him regardless. Yeah, 63%. There we go. And he went for another Cosmic Power. Excellent. We caught this guy in a really good position. You know, as much as Clefable is a problem when it gets those Cosmic Powers up, his base defense is still not that great when you look at it. So, I mean, I don't know. With two cosmic power boosts, there was no way he was taking that that well. I want to kind of go for another Flare Blitz, but I do see Charizard X coming in. So, I'm probably going to try to see if I can maybe catch this guy with an Earthquake instead, even though it loses the sheer force boost and the, and the stab bonus and all that other nice stuff that Flare Blitz comes with. Yeah, that would suck though. But, I mean, the Earthquake, at least it would hit Charizard hard. But I don't think Clefable's gonna be able to get killed by it. You know what? Let's just go for the Earthquake anyways. Oh, okay. Never mind, it worked out. So this is one situation where Clefable didn't destroy my team due to the fact that those cosmic powers just come in non-stop. This is good. This is really good. Now I know Charizard X also likes to carry Earthquake, so I'm predicting this one's set to be Flare Blitz, Thunder Punch, Earthquake, and Brick Break, perhaps? I've seen them things with Brick Break, so that's the only reason why I don't want to go into Tyranitar here. Otherwise, I, I would have gone into him already, but I just don't want to see that Brick Break coming. Although right now, I can kind of see an Earthquake coming. And he's going to be faster. Unless he's max attack and not max speed. Well, rather, if he's adamant and not jolly. So if he's adamant, I will outspeed him here. And I outsped him, he's adamant, holy crap, okay. Here we go, Darmanitan. That's kind of odd. I mean, I've always known that in these tiers, you got to make sure that you have the, as much speed as possible. That's why online Pokemon, for now, maybe some Pokemon I'll make things a little bit different, but for now, Haxorus and Darmanitan have jolly natures and with max speed because, you know, I, I really can't afford to, I can't afford to, um, unfortunately, not like outspeed something that's around the same base speed as me, considering that I'm using Pokemon that aren't exactly as adept as the top of the OU charts, you know what I mean? Because, you know, the Pokemon at the top of the OU charts, they, they're, they're, they're at the top for, the re for a reason, you know? They're the easiest Pokemon to use, they have the best viability, the most options, and I'm not using Pokemon that grant me all that stuff, so I gotta kind of play a little bit safe. Now, Gorgeist, I'm thinking, is a great switch in for the Gliscor, unless he maybe has Acrobatics or something. Or is this a toxic stalling Gliscor? If it is, that's an issue. But. I'm feeling like I can also go into Tyranitar and potentially set up my Stealth Rocks here. Which will really help since I know this guy's going to be switching in and out a lot. And he wouldn't have any way to take him down. So you know what? Let's just go for the Stealthies right now. He's going to go for the knockoff. But I know for a fact that the Skull Score is probably not going to be able to kill us with just one Earthquake. So especially considering it's Tyranitar, we'll be able to get these rocks up with no problem. Yeah, I, I kind of realized the other day that doing narrations without having water easily available is torturous after about 30 minutes. So 
lessons learned. But all right, I'm feeling really good. We got our stealth box up. This glitch score, we have a nice punch waiting for him. So I'm, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. It's not going to kill him, but it's going to do a ton of damage. And I don't know. We don't really need to preserve Tyranitar at this point. He pretty much did his job. And he wouldn't be able to hold a candle against Greninja and Scizor. So, although Greninja and Scizor are kind of... Greninja especially... Man, maybe we should have saved Tyranitar. Holy crap. We just gave up our winning condition. <laughs> I think we just might have potentially given up our winning condition because Greninja hits everybody else super effective. And that's why this Tyranitar is also made to be somewhat of a Greninja count well not a counter, but you know it's supposed to check Greninja in the sense of using Thunder Wave on it to slow it down and be able to take a surf from it no problem. Or hydro pump even. But damn. I just hope we didn't give up our winning condition here. You know, let's just go for another wait, oh no no, let's go for a Thunder Wave. I mean he's probably going to kill us anyways. He's probably gonna, yeah, okay. Alright. I really hate stall. I'm thinking we could just go into Darmanitan. And um, the Flare Blitz should do a ton of damage to this guy. And Scizor's Bullet Punch will not be able to KO us, so. We are alright. Let's just go for a Flare Blitz. Fuck it. And the sand stops, so Darmanitan's HP is preserved to an extent. But here comes this fucking Greninja, who we just gave our counter away to. Well, we just gave... Well, I don't know. I mean, Tyranitar isn't really a counter to Greninja. It doesn't really want to switch in on two moves, but it can take at least one. I know that for a fact. But right now, nobody wants to take anything from this Greninja. I'm thinking Blastoise could potentially be what stops this Greninja in his tracks, because I don't think he'll be able to kill Blastoise with one hit. But we're going to need my Darmanitan for that um, Scizor if we do manage to get past Greninja. So right now, Gorgeist... I'm sorry, even though I love this Pokemon, like, a lot of people don't really see much use in the Punkaboo slash Gorgeist line, but I, I love Gorgeist. I mean, first off, considering the fact that Punkaboo is one of the cutest Pokemon in existence, and then Gorgeist has, like, this amazing bulk, I, I'm in love with this Pokemon, man. I, I really am. So, anyways, he's going to be able to kill us, though, because, you know, Greninja is a fucking powerhouse, considering that he has Stab on everything. But now, here's the moment of truth. Will we be able to kill this Greninja? with our Blastoise here, or at least do a lot of damage to this Greninja. I'm hoping we can kill this piece of shit. The Aura Spear should do a lot of damage. I mean, I'm thinking he's probably gonna go for a Grass Knot if he has it. Okay, he's, oh, he's got Dark Pulse. That's not gonna do too much at all. Aura Spear, easily take him out. All right, we're good. Cause I've seen Greninja with Grass, with grass Knot, but usually, I don't, I don't know, I've seen them with it, but I don't think it's too common to carry that shit because it doesn't really do that much damage, considering that, you know, they usually use it against, like, Rotom Wash, and Grass Knot does Jack Squad to Rotom Wash, so... Anyways, now, this Scizor does bother me, because, of course, he can go for his, um, Sword Dances, and the Sword Dances will enable him to do a lot of damage to Darmanitan and Haxorus. Although, Darmanitan can kind of switch in now and take two moves, hopefully. I'm just hoping the Scizor doesn't Sword Dance right now. We can go for a skull. Anyway, he's just gonna go for a board punch. Hopefully we get a burn. No burn, but it's fine. You know, I mean, the way this I that's why I like Scald on Mega Blastoise a lot, because usually he can stay in there to take moves to the point where he can go for multiple skulls. And you know, I mean, the chance to burn is really valuable. I, I put a high value on that. Like I never really used Scald too much before, but the chance to burn is really, really convenient in some cases. Anyways, that was an interesting game. We won that 3-0. I was really scared of the Greninja sweeping, but thankfully he didn't have Grass Knot. I don't know if Grass Knot would have been able to kill Blastoise in the first place, and if he did have Grass Knot, if the Grass typing would have made it so he, that he wasn't one hit KO'd by the Aura Sphere, scary stuff to think about. But you can't forget that Blastoise has modest nature with Mega Launcher, with an Aura Sphere. I mean, It'll do a lot of damage, so even if he did turn Grass-type with Grass-knot, I think we probably would have been able to kill him in one hit regardless.